Hey everyone, I just wanted to pop on and I can't believe we're a week away from Christmas. I'm not feeling it. Maybe it's because it's been overdone and we've been listening to Christmas songs since November. I don't know. But obviously I wanted to come on and speak about Harry and Meghan and how the Crown presents this fictional dramatisation of this young prince and his jealousy, his anger and rage for his brother. And how on that same media giant we can simply flip shows and watch him real life, real time with his wife by his side, proving, validating that maybe the crown is not so fictional after all as we listen in and watch on at this jealousy and outrage of how dare, how dare the family treat us that way, how William had more sausages on a plate than me and the bigger bedroom in Balmoral, oh poor Harry. In the demise of a man, the demise of this person in front of our eyes, this once prince used to stand alongside his brother in that role, in that position with the family, the royal family, his family, in how we watch on as we listen to sources and rumours about how Harry and Meghan are insistent that this is a vendetta from the firm. This is why the brands don't want to pick up on these two when the reality is yet again, no accountability, no responsibility, no remorse for the actions and decisions that they have chose and brought to our screens. Which brings me back to why the aftermath, why I share my opinions, my beliefs on watching what I see. And that's simply from my inbuilt abilities in reading a room, understanding actions and behaviours over words every time, nestled in from my childhood in how I spent a life reading actions and behaviours. I heard all the words, I listened to them, I will change. It won't be this way no more. I love you, sorry for last night. This honor loop, this constant reminder in how those words meant nothing. They were just a smoke screen in how I, like my siblings, had to watch on and read actions and behaviors and the depth and the meaning to those. This is what you have to do when you have to survive as a child. This is what you have to do when you're living abuse like so many out there, relying on a subtle movement of the eye, an action, a, a behavior, a mood gone down. Walking on eggshells most of your life, which brings me back to this narrative that Harry lived trauma, abused, some have said in how I feel insulted at watching that out there. Because I've watched, and here's the thing, this is what Harry can't take away. The years and years of love that we watched him receive. The years and years of videos of him laughing and smiling and very comfortable within his role, within that institution, within that firm that he now believes has a vendetta against his name while we've watched him and his wife with a vendetta worse and the same projection on the ultimate level and we see and we listen and we watch but the reality is in how i pick apart is harry when he stepped away must have been very comfortable in the fact that he could do all this and his family would take him back the abusers some say now. He was quite comfortable in who he was because his family had led him to that point. By letting him do all that he wanted, by looking after, by taking care of, by not letting the real Harry see the light of day. And I say the real Harry, I mean he was enabled in every step of the way. In how by him simply saying the words of hate projecting against that name. He simply chose to use the words also of I love them, my dad, my brother, it's just the firm. Knowing that these words, this nicety, would get him out of the trouble that he had placed himself in because his family do love him. 
They have forgave him. They have looked after him and they have protected him. This is the dynamic. These are the actions and behaviors that peeled apart, totally destroy the words coming out of his mouth. He felt quite comfortable in doing all he did. Which brings me back to my therapy session when I looked at the therapist and she said, if your abuser was sat in a chair in front of you, what would you want to say to him when it simply dawned on me? There's no words that I could say that would take my story away. It was down to me to fix me. It was down to me to turn this negativity in my mind into a positivity. And that's why the aftermath is here. Me finding ways and tools and sharing them to help others who didn't have a therapy session with Gabor, who didn't have the financial support that we watched Harry gain all his life, yet we still listen in and watch him whine some more. Also, his actions and behaviours and how he's targeted a country of how we're all wrong and how we're all easily led by the media just shows how comfortable Harry was in the fact him coming out to do this would help him in bringing the royal family down. He was quite confident that the people loved him and why would he not? Because they did. They adored him. Once upon a time being the favourite royal of all time. He was happy, happy, happy and confident within himself to come out and attack his family, knowing in his heart, deep down, they would take him back. Because in my opinion, this was the routine, the normal in Prince Harry getting his own way in how maybe he wasn't abused and maybe he was given everything he ever wanted and ever dreamed in how he was quite comfortable when coming out and taking the family down, in his belief and understanding that this country didn't hate him or his wife, his own words, it was the royal family making these leaks because the love and support coming out for them, the family couldn't cope with. But yet this country have been left with this mass onslaught, this mass attack, this mass narrative up over our heads that we're all bad, we all speak that way and we're all happy for how they've been treated in that way. That we've enjoyed it, that we've loved it and embraced it. No matter what happens, no matter where you are in the world, there are headlines against Harry and his wife, America, Australia, but the great British narrative that it's us. It's us that are going against this boy and his wife. They have no accountability and no remorse. And as we watch on at this sad, sad affair of Harry on the crown and how on that same media giant, he is validating their words, their fictional dramatization. What an absolute waste of a platform so big. What an absolute joke in the fact that he's chose the decisions he has. In the fact he's chose those decisions, bleh, decisions. Show me and everyone else that Harry didn't feel the abused. In fact, the opposite. He felt quite comfortable in the fact that his family would take him back. He felt quite comfortable in the people would support him and go against his family and attack. Because Harry isn't the victim that he tells the world he is and the British people are not the only ones printing headlines about this prince and his wife. But again, that's what we've been left with courtesy of Prince Harry is the great British narrative that we're all out bad and to destroy his life when the only people that are attacking their own and bringing this on themselves is those two with no accountability and remorse for the actions and behaviours that they have made and created.